Party people! Welcome to the show. Welcome to Where Does Food. I'm Elle. And I'm Tim. And she's Elle. Hey oh Yeah. We already did that bit. We already did that, but you know, just in case. <laughs> Uh, so guys, today we're talking about oysters. Oysters. We're going back to the. We're going back to the sea. Yeah, back to the sea. We back had a. Uh, we, we had, had little, lobster. Yeah, we had a little pilot of lobster, yeah. and yeah, here we here we we're are. Going back in. Just can't get enough. Just can't get enough. Yeah, Trey songs diving. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. Never mind. All right, we're calling it. We get Trey songs. It's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in the witching hour. No, um, it's still way too early for that. It is Halloween though. Oysters. Anywho, oysters. So there's a quote by Jonathan Swift that I think describes. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That describes oysters pretty well. And it goes, and I quote, he was a bold man that first ate an oyster, which I agree with. Technically speaking, these things are alive. Yeah, I would, in- I would also uh, wager that you could say that about, I guess, all of it. All of it. He was a brave man who drank milk. I don't know. Oysters. I'm... He was a brave man who ate an egg. I'll give you milk because why are you? Yeah. Yeah. Egg. We are going to do a, milk yeah. at some point. I am super interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> why the fuck people are like, uh, yeah. I'm going to. Never mind. I don't want to yep. go there. We're not going there. Oysters. Oysters. Seafood. Sea world. Don't go there. Don't go there. Anyways, technically, like most of the time, you're going to see raw oysters like on some ice. They're going to be freshly shucked. Ideally, if you go to a nice place, like yeah. right before they come to your table. You're going to cut your hand. You, yeah, you don't have to do all that. It's just, it's already in the half shell. You're going to have an assortment of sauces, like a vinaigrette, some lemon juice. Um, Hot and sauces. And then some yeah. horseradish, horseradish, if depending. you're a fucking it's, psycho. <laughs> dude, I saw that and I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> okay cocktail bro. sauce is more. Okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, some people, as you probably see, they'll just throw a little le- lemon juice on there and then t- That's not take enough. it down. But yeah, <laughs> if you are like some people, and you have your oysters and you have your little, your little shucking knife that thing is still alive once you open that shell then it's technically dead but dude it's it for all intents and purposes it's still squirming around so it's like ugh. but yeah people love it because it's got savory and briny flavors that's one way to say it um tim have you had oysters before mm-hmm. so how do you feel about oysters i i hate oysters okay perfect I so just spot they are <laughs> Again, to say that they're savory and briny, yeah, yeah. So is the ocean, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Like, I guess, I <laughs> guess, if you were to walk on the beach, go a foot oh. deep, and just go down there, grab yeah. a handful of sand, and then you sucked on that sand. I guess that's also savory and briny. Sure, same thing. Just put a little sure. bit of Louisiana sure. on that bat handful some, of some ocean old sand. Old seasoning on there. Yeah, put a little bit of that on there and <laughs> suck it down so, because you're doing the same damn thing. So from a scale of one to five. Oh, that's it. That's, that's the it. scale. It's one to five. One to five. No, there's no. We're not. There's nothing else there. No. It's just one to five. It's yeah. a numerical scale. Elle's feeling very lazy we're tonight. Lazy diet. Yeah. Um. Wow. You took a, my gold star. Too. Yeah. A one, man. Like. <laughs> It's, they're awful, dude. I don't know if I'm going to change your mind then on this one, bud. They're we just might, bad. We might actually yeah, go yeah. down to zero on no, this one tonight, well, my I'm, guy. Well, I'm super interested to learn about them because intrinsically I like learning about things even if I don't like them, you know? But like, <laughs> yeah, man, again. It's, oh, fucking hell. This I do. Great. I love <laughs> that the description of flavor is savory and briny. Anything that tastes like Dirt and salt, that's the flavor. The earth. Yeah, you know what? It's actually really savory and briny. <laughs> the earth. Salted it's savory. catfish. Super savory. savory and briny. Oh, mud. You'd have me sound savory, but then you put the briny part, and I'm like, mm, I don't I, know if I want anything described as briny. Well, you know, I, I like, describe what? like I describe pickles and everything else like briny. I describe all that as briny. Ooh, okay. I'll but, give you, okay. But like briny to me is- Clearly is, not this. No. <laughs> It's just, it, to me, it it is, it, I mean, I guess kind of, right? It's indicative of like a sourness, a tartness. And yeah, yeah. But okay, you're not about it. Either way. Either way. Yeah, uh, a one. A one. One out Solid of five. One. All yeah. right. Hey there, it's your host, Tim, stopping the podcast to tell you about an awesome deal that you can get through Rep Sports. Rep Sports is a supplement company, so they help supplement people's workout lives. They have proteins, pre-workouts, post-workouts, recoveries. They have all types of supplements over there, so go check them out and fill out that stack. I know you're getting low. 
I can feel it. My stack's getting low. I'm about to do me a shop as well. You can also get mine and L's favorite energy drink, Raise Energy. I'm telling you, one can gets you through the day. Not a problem. Raise Energy is fantastic. No crash at all. So if you go to repsports.com and use the code WDF15, you can get 15% at checkout. Again, WDF15, you get 15% at checkout, and you also get to support this podcast and support your workout routine, man. Go do it. Now enjoy the rest of this podcast that we love doing. Hey guys, welcome to the ad section. I'm here to tell you real quick about Anchor by Spotify. You may have heard us talk about Anchor at the end of our episodes. is because Anchor is the platform we use to distribute our podcasts. It's totally free. It helps us distribute our podcast to different platforms. That's how we're on Apple Podcasts. That's how we're on Google Podcasts, CastBox, you name it. They've helped us do that. You can record directly on the app, on the webpage. So you don't even need a super fancy setup. It's super straightforward, totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on your podcast or whatever you like to do. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the episode. Oysters, they're pretty versatile, whether you think so or not, which it doesn't really sound like you think so. Um, but you, you can have them raw, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, they can be smoked, boiled, baked, fried, roasted, stewed, canned, pickled, steamed. So there's mm-hmm. so many different ways that you can have them. Yeah, I've um, never had them. F- you know what? I've had them one way, uh, and that's uh, live, fresh. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that's honestly how most people enjoy yeah. them. Who the um, fuck, who's frying that? Okay, I have no but, idea. Yeah. Um, also, much to my surprise, when I was learning about it, people used to have them in drinks. So there's your savory. Come again? Yeah, it'd be like people would put the actual what drinks? Oyster. I don't fucking know. People what drinks are they doing the day, that? They put some oysters in there, some vodka, and call it a day. What drinks are they doing that in? I wouldn't drink that. That's disgusting. I know. Well. Yes. All right. Okay. Bl- Bloody Marys have. Cl- like clam juice in it. So. Do they really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Never Ooh. mind. Take it back. Okay. Sorry for being judgmental. I mean, I'm still. I have to. I have to cut my bias. Bit. I have to cut my biases down a little bit here. Because you. Because I just. Are you a Bloody Mary guy or a mimosa Ooh, guy? Oh, Bloody Mary. Really? Between it's the two, it's you're an gonna... alcoholic gazpacho. It's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <laughs> like it is delicious. Absolutely love it, man. All right, well, Ooh, you yeah. enjoy some, some clam juice, some clam juice, some vodka, Tim. some tomato juice, some, some horseradish, some hot Ugh. sauce. Put the olives in there. Give me the celery stick. Throw wow. a chicken uh, on top. I don't even care, no. buddy. No. I am going to oh, Absolutely yeah, not. eat it up. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll order the Bloody Mary for you then. So people like to eat oysters. They, um, like most... <laughs> full stop. Full stop. <laughs> people like to eat oysters. Like oysters. End of podcast. We're not, uh, we're not doing anything else. No, but apparently they are a great source of zinc, iron, calcium, selenium, and then vitamin A and vitamin B. So like most other seafood, they're okay. great in those things. Nice. People love them. Nice. Which You can get vitamins. You get vitamins, which points out to kind of the history of it as oysters were dropped off from the elite, elite level in the Roman and Greek empire. Right. Um, Back to them Romans. Right. Yeah. As you came on to like modern day, not yeah. really, but earlier, um, earlier in the 1900s, it was, people would just eat oysters cause it was super cheap and it has a shit ton of nutrients in it. And right. Right. Got a lot of zinc, you know? Yeah. Helps people, you fight that COVID-19. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> was it? The bubon- oh, the Spanish flu. Spanish flu. That's what there it is. You mean the flu of 1912? Uh, the Spanish flu. You're being fucking racist about it. <laughs> Oh, God, you're right. Um, I'm going to go walk. I'm kidding. Uh, Do you hear that, Tim? (laughs) It's me being canceled. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so obviously there are different types of oysters. We don't eat certain types of oysters. So you've got the pearl oysters, which you get our pearls from. Um, Then we've got our windowpane oysters. Then we've got our windowpane oysters, and those are harvested because their shells are translucent, so people like to use them for decor. Okay. Yeah, (laughs) right? And then I've never... What a waste of time. I know. Um, and then we have the oyster that we're familiar with. There are different types, obviously, based off of different regions, but mostly is the Pacific oyster. That's the most commonly ate one. So that's okay. kind of the one that has just taken over. Um, <laughs> there's two ways that you can cultivate oysters. Um, the first way is by the 
bagging method. Um, so with the bagging method, pretty much they cultivate the oysters. She's walking around with a bag. Yeah, the quite ocean. no. Yeah, they yeah. grab them and then they kind of artificially set them up, and then they're like wow, matured. Very, yeah, very on the nose. I know. Um, yeah. and then they uh pretty much hang them from a bag above the bottom of the of the ocean floor. Oh, okay. And so it can it produces a wild oyster collection method, cultivating a, a ecosystem that in which you can just kind of pick when you want. Exactly. Sounds good. Exactly. Um. And then I mean, it um, seems pretty green considering. Exactly. That's their that's the really yeah, really and then they have the release method. The release method, it's kind of the same process except instead of putting them in the bag, they put them back into the ocean. Okay. And then they just snag them. So the bagging method is the more expensive option, but right. also But it's probably better. Yeah, there's yeah. least predators that way. Of course. So apparently I love science lessons. So I'm gonna give you another science lesson. Science with the Oyster Edition. Watch out, Bill Nye. I'm coming for your job. No, I'm just kidding. No one could come for you, your angel of the world. <laughs> 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 okay, so oysters and their relatives. Okay. So scallops, mussels, and nah, clams. Scallops, I fuck Have with you, boy. I was going to say, okay, all right. Scallop, I feel like out of, honestly, including the oysters, scallops are the, the best ones. You said scallops, oysters, and mussels? Scallops, mussels, clams, and oysters. So yeah. About the four, yeah. Yeah, scallops. Um, I would tear them. Scallops for sure, followed by clams. I've, I've never had the mussels. Listen. Clams. Uh, the, so I'm not the, sure if they're... The, they, again... They're in Bloody Mary, so mm, okay. they go above voice. Well, they're all, so technically they're all bivalves. So a bivalve <laughs> essentially means that because valves. of their, yeah, their shells, quote unquote, I used my, valves. I used my science brain science just then. Rules. You said bivalve and I was like, I got it. Bi, Bi two. two, valve, holes. <laughs> <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Yeah. So the valves are considered shells in this situation. Yeah, so right, the bivalves, right, right, right. yes, you got it. Absolutely. So. Keep this in mind, bivalves have been dated back to over 500 million years to the Cambrian period. Yeah, that makes complete and utter sense. So is, everything about that didn't surprise me. It was just yeah. like, it was just like a bad sitcom. <laughs> yeah, like I, I immediately knew the plot. I was like, oh, of course. Like everything about the way it looks just feels right. like I've exactly. been here forever. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's pretty much a fossil. Yeah. So again, with that in mind, it's said to be that the Roman Empire were the first to actually culture Holy. oysters. So this dude, my guy, Sergius Orata of the Roman Republic, this guy is considered to be the mover and the shaker. The oyster king? The, he's the oyster man. All right. <laughs> Netflix. He was moving that dough. We got a deal for you. Apparently, he had, <laughs> oyster king. <laughs> he had a, a general knowledge of hydraulics, which he then built a cultivation system that of, had locks and channels and was able to control the tide. Of hydraulics? Hydraulics. In guys, the Roman do you guys era? Fucking, I don't think we understand. I think the Roman Empire was the peak of society, and then we just reverted back and now. I mean, it was just the I'm, ebb and flow. So I'm going to be honest with you. The more we learn about the Roman Empire- Dude, they're aliens. And not only, <laughs> not only that, but the more we learn about these ancient civs is just like- I, it's kind of humbling because it's yes. very much like how <laughs> insulting it is that we're just like aliens are everywhere. Like how could people have done this? And it's just like, how? Like, look at the evidence of just like, like, dude, like the toaster was invented in 1850. Like, Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> like, that's insane to me. Um, but like, yeah. So this dude like knew hydraulics and created a mechanism to cultivate Oysters. Fucking insane, dude. In the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire. Jesus. Like I said, moving that dough. Um, and of course, because of this, like this is how oysters were able to travel across right. Mesopotamia for all intents and purposes. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so, like a lot of the seafood that we've mentioned before, lobster. We've only literally mentioned one seafood, the lobster. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oysters were a delicacy for the wealthy in the Roman and Greek empires, right? Right. Um, so, actually, they're so important that sometimes the shells of the oysters themselves would be used as ballots. To wow. Vote, right? Yeah. Wow. Um, as per Greek yeah. mythology, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, um, so born from a sea in the form of an oyster, um, which probably should have been deemed as foreshadowing as pretty much what I learned is just throughout time, as soon as oysters are up and popping, um, they pretty much get over harvested. And oh. so then with okay. the local population of oysters, they're like, oh shit, we need we need more oysters. So then they bring in foreign species, which then fucks up the local harvest and then 
right those like right no longer can cultivate and so they lose ultimately lose so all those oyster beds which is kind of fast forwarding because of variables outside of our current control um we're losing a lot of the oyster beds so there's just yeah. there's smaller regions that we're getting all the oysters from which yeah. sucks because um, it kind of used to be all over yeah and now but, it's only specific uh, places don't oysters don't oysters intrinsically clean their um environment so like theoretically if you can figure out a way to safely control a population you can clean waterways and create a nice uh, yeah. lively uh seabed In for theory. them to come yeah. back and cultivate yeah, yeah. You know, like maybe if that we would... did that in like New York City somewhere, maybe they are doing that kind of. There's a sort company of. that's trying to do that. Either way, hopefully, that's what I know about oysters. But oysters. this isn't my episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so backtrack here, some timeline. So in the early 19th century, oysters were cheap and eaten by the working class. Um, the oyster, hey, my people, hey, my people. So speaking of our people in New York, the New York Harbor became the world's largest sor- source get of it, oysters. Get it? Not anymore. Not anymore. And the but New York that- Harbor's literally like a fucking cesspool it, now oof, yeah i wouldn't have any oysters from there so you think of the hot dog stands that you see now in new york city right think of that but with oysters so oh, d- dirty water oysters dirty water oysters <laughs> so people were just yo, can I get the, uh, yeah yo i'll take the onions and the relish the <laughs> oh gosh so fun fact also bar culture loved oysters because they were cheap and they were filling still do still do yeah. um and people they were like oh yeah this is a great food option to serve with alcohol which turned into um pretty much oyster bars Woo! yeah so that's why you yeah. have yeah it was a great way for people to quick lunch yeah middle of the work day get some alcohol to wash down it, that briny savory sh- flavor get figgity fuck and uh yeah. yeah then go back to work like nothing happened yeah. um so we talk about modern innovation Okay. The railroad. So oh, refrigeration nice. and railroads were the reason why oysters could then be shipped across the United States and Europe. Makes sense. Isn't that fucking wild? Yeah. So we talked about how um, with the refrigeration canning. Oh, right. So yeah, they'd be able to can the oysters. Yeah. Right. So crazy to think that one of the yeah. first f- foods that we were weird that expediting across the country know, with oysters weird that, weird that seafood in general seems to just have mm-hmm. gotten canned in yeah. the states like, like we sardines just, we just canned lobster and we canned uh, oysters and yeah just like uh, it was like oof. just can whatever i guess that's it because of the booming oyster economy economy that was happening in new york city um it actually helped kickstart the restaurant trade it accounted for 10 percent of all of money would, coming into like, the fucking who would have thought yeah so that's actually wild. So, like, New York City's, like, restaurant industry yeah. really was, like, on the backs of oysters. Between, yeah, between the restaurant industry and then how many workers were needed to cultivate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To, a lot of jobs there. Yeah. to a lot for the demand yeah. that was happening. Um, Too bad we didn't have the foresight to keep that that economy <sighs> rich. You know what I mean? We just destroyed the harbor. Not a big deal. Yeah. No, it's fine. It yeah. Nobody, nobody protested that. No, did we? <laughs> oh, they probably did. <laughs> Be honest, we, they, probably did. they probably forgot about to write about it honestly yeah. so same thing happened though like it did in the Rome, in the roman empire yeah yeah we over cultivated over cultivated probably polluted you know we tried stuff. to bring in foreign species yeah. it contaminated the supply chain that we had and so this started the domino effect to which it became oysters became a delicacy for the wealthy and right not right. your everyday that, yeah, working classic people. right yeah. shortage and then all of a sudden becomes a delicacy Supply and demand, right like, yep. so it really sucks so this kind of brings me back though because in 2007 there was a, a sh- you know a little shake up to the game so yeah remember- the housing market crashed <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a podcast about the big short. <laughs> now a major move. Motion yeah, which actually started uh, in 2005 in fuck. San Francisco area. <laughs> Fucking hell. When That's the housing market was first say. started to crash. That was that bubble we're talking about. So yeah, remember what I <laughs> remember <laughs> when I said uh those oysters get dated back to the Cambrian period? Yeah. So about 2007, scientists found oyster middens, which didn't know what the fuck a midden was. Essentially, it's a, just like a massive dunghill or heap pile. Okay. So they found all these remains of these oysters, essentially. Oyster scientists did? Yep. Um, which across the world, which backed up the claim that oyster consumption was dating back to prehistoric times. Nice. So people were just eating. People were just eating things out of the yeah, sea, man. Yeah. That was I guess you just was... didn't have a lot of choices prehistory. I you mean, know I don't know. I mean? How, like, how are you supposed to slay bison? 
person. Yeah. Well, I'm also just I mean, interested in like again, I know very little about human civilization. <laughs> We're learning like, a lot though right now. But like I like I think something that I'm still just and we'll never know. Right. Like I think when we uh, like originally it's like you want to learn about food history let's figure right. out let's figure out the first person to be like let me do this yeah but like and we're never gonna know that but it is very interesting to me that like civilizations were just like you know they were out in the ocean and they like you know they, they grab some stuff and they're like yeah we're gonna eat hey, this. this shit and like, we're hungry man we gotta this eat this good. which yes so obviously like in prehistoric times they didn't have a shucking knife right so what they did right. was they just put it in this little consider like what they would consider a pan Right. Right. And you just over the fire. Yeah, yeah. And just wait for the clam yeah, to, to open, open. and yep. and yeah. eat it. And that was that. So that was pretty much oysters, dude. They yeah. really they really again We just over cultivate we, them and then Yeah, it kind of sucks, but like that's pretty much where the the, yeah. demand, the supply and demand happen for and right now yeah. it's a considered a delicacy, quote unquote. So Yeah, I guess is it currently like I don't know delicacy is a weird word but I like i wouldn't i don't know if i would call them a delicacy but i do feel like they are a little pricier absolutely i guess is that is that a struggle right now and like finding oysters is that a problem uh, in the food supply yes wow okay who would have thought yeah so a fun fact about the food supply fun fact about food supply <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess kind of going back to how people eat them now. So obviously, like we said, people eat them raw, the lemon juice, the vinegar cocktail sauces. This part is obviously interesting, but makes sense. So the oysters flavor profiles are more indicative of the regions that they're cultivated from, right? Right. Because so, they just taste like the shit they're processing. Exactly. So it's like you have things from salty, briny, buttery, metallic. Buttery. Right. Yeah. That is a liberal use of that word. Uh, fruity, Holy depending shit. on. So I do love that we use the word butter with seafood though it's very it's very interesting. interesting yeah so i just i mean of course like you said previous pods we kind of just care about north america so yeah in a baby <laughs> <laughs> there is about in oregon you've got two bays out there okay massachusetts there's two prince edward island up in canada there's one long island there's one bay maine one oh yeah virginia of course one. maine maryland specifically you might actually have probably heard the chesapeake bay yeah yeah in new jersey cape may all these places are pretty much where we get our our oysters, our oysters from right gotta save the oysters gotta save the sea bottoms you know that's the- <laughs> like we really do Got to say the sea bottom. No, it's true, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. No joking. I know I've been making jabs all night, but no joking aside, oysters, pivotal to, um, to you know, sea life. Uh, like I said, they are literally used as a filtration system. Like I, I, I know that for a fact is that they're like they're like their purpose yeah. on the seabed is to help like filter shit yeah. like, and they help cultivate extra and other life. Yes. To also grow and, and, and enjoy yes. a good, you know, living environment as well. So it all you just know, plays into the ecosystem. Yeah, if oysters were in the harbor and now they can't cultivate in the harbor, yeah. there's probably a lot of other life that could no longer uh, survive because it, you know, focused on uh, their energies on the oyster. So um, don't destroy the world. One, oysters are good to some, not to me. <laughs> To some, I was like, does this change your mind a little bit? Oysters are good, so but I mean, as a as an environmental person, oysters are important. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's oysters. That's oysters. How do you feel? I mean, would you up it? Would you lower the score? You know what? Just I again, you know, coming into this, I'm just thinking of yeah. oysters as food, and I'm right. thinking of it as a food, and I give it a one. But by the end of it, you know, you help remind me of something that I already kind of knew right. is that like they're vital to the ecosystem. Who so uh, I'm bumping them up just for hey. ecosystem purposes to a three. Hey, a uh, three out of five. We'll I take think it. That's I, pretty solid. You know what? Beverage. They are vitally important. Yeah, I think culturally they're pretty cool. I, I like that you know that they were like a bar food. I I do just thoroughly enjoy people just <laughs> like drunken clam, just like shucking them and then just like the putting some of, sauce yeah. and they're just like shooting them. It used to be a, a world record to right how many oysters you could shuck. Right. So like I, you know, there's like that cool, there, there, there's that yeah. vibe around them. And again, I think their work in the ecosystem is is just super awesome. I like when you kind of realize what oysters do and, and just kind of how pivotal they are. Yeah. Um, and kind of makes you dislike you. You know what? Up, up the the, the, oh, the score for the the oyster to a three. Uh, down the scale for humans. Come on, guys, you know, we could be we're, better. We're ruining the oyster populations I mean, here. You know, we got to be better. We've about been that. doing it for years. Yeah, prehistoric apparently. Um, Dude, honestly, <laughs> who would have thought? Not me. They didn't even have the actual utensils to eat it, but they're they figured out a way. Yeah, man, you just throw it on the fire. Yeah, fires to feel everything. alive. <laughs> 
we've learned that that's what you do. You just throw shit on the pit, and then you're like, oh, okay, Ooh. it works. And we're also learning that you know, old civilizations are a lot more civilized than we realize. Yeah, so, you know, we're way we're, more advanced. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, we're starting to <laughs> shout out to the Romans man, for we're real, you guys. To piece it all together. <laughs> Human history and food history. Watch out, Dan Brown. They're parallel lines we <laughs> thought they were perpendicular no parallel <laughs> honestly yeah we're getting a little history too with the food um all right that's the end of oysters that's oysters that's, oysters, that's the end of our sea trip yeah that's the end of the podcast we're done and i'm kidding if you want more of where does food yeah, hit us do. up on twitter yes at where does food at tim we hunt at El Chapo. At El Chapo. You hit us up. Give us, you know, talk with us about the episode. Let us know. Give us some, give us some more insight. Give us some suggestions. Yes. You know, whatever. Do what you do on the... On the interwebs. Inter- interwebs. Uh, Twitter, specifically. <laughs> on the bird app. <laughs> yeah, on the bird app. <laughs> uh, you can find us on anchor.fm <laughs> forward slash Yo. where dash does dash food. Easy. Yeah, so anchor.fm forward slash where does 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 food. You'll find all of this in the episode description um, on Hot Spotify, links. Apple Podcasts, uh, CastBox, you name it. Uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know, it helps the podcast. Um, and then if what? you are on uh, Anchor, you can hit the supporter button, support us, help us pay the bills, um, you know, get us some new equipment. We also have some We'd bonus that. content that we're working on. Yes. We have some ideas involving, you know, different beers, maybe some wines or some spirits. Yes. You know, and we're developing maybe some just shorter bonus little content episodes to you guys love it. keep things alive. So. You know, a lot like oysters. Um, (laughs) So check us out there. Peace.